Now, this one's been on the back burner for a while. Today, we're taking a look at this Lenovo ThinkPad P14S Gen 2 I bought for only £200. It came with an i7 11th Gen CPU, 16GB of RAM, NVIDIA T500 graphics, and <coughs> a broken screen. Seeing as these laptops were close to £2,000 brand new only three years ago, I just had to take a look. Surely a quick and easy screen replacement would revitalize this ThinkPad to its former glory. Well, stick around to find out. If you do enjoy this video and want to see more, then why not subscribe and also like. I'm getting closer to that 1k sub milestone, so any help would be greatly appreciated. Anyways, let's get onto this rather crippled ThinkPad. I bought this ThinkPad off eBay around two months ago, so yeah, it's been a while. The seller described it as for parts are not working, but the main issue was the screen was absolutely obliterated. Still, I thought wouldn't a quick screen replacement do the trick? I mean, they aren't that expensive going around 40 to 50 pounds, so altogether this would owe me around 250, which I thought was a bargain. So I bought it and was quite looking forward to this little beast. Keep in mind this is the most powerful and most expensive ThinkPad I've ever bought. A few days later it arrived nicely packaged, also came with a generic AC adapter. Better than nothing I guess. First impressions were quite good, there doesn't seem to be much wear on the outer chassis, the sides look to be quite clean with barely any marks, opening up the ThinkPad the same story applies, the palm rest and keys look to be near pristine, and yes that screen is battered but more on that later. Let's see if the ThinkPad actually turns on. Initial boot looks to be quite good and it went into Windows straight away, so at least it's functional. But oh boy that screen, it's definitely seen better days. You can see the impact point right on the edge, perhaps some debris got caught under the screen which led to the damage, as long as everything else is working I have no concerns, a quick screen replacement shouldn't be too hard. So let's get this on a desk and take out that faulty screen, before you say, yes I did disconnect the battery which you should always do just in case you kill the backlight. I laid it down flat and used the pry tool to go around the edges of the screen which wasn't too hard. The adhesive underneath the trim was quite finicky and I had to be careful not to snap it. After a few minutes the trim finally came out, now all that needs to be done is take out the screen, a few cables later it's out. I did a bit of searching for a new screen, I had to make sure it was exactly the same panel. There were some with different colour gamuts and brightness which wouldn't suit this type of machine. Finally, I found this one on SSL for around £50. A few days later it finally came wrapped up nicely. Let's connect the new screen to the ThinkPad, and put a few strips of adhesive on the screen assembly where that new screen will sit. Before fitting in fully, let's test to see if it all works as intended. A few nerve wracking seconds later, it booted up straight away which was great. I went into Windows to test the brightness levels and colour reproduction, it all looked just fine. Now all that's left to do is clip it back in. Altogether, it took around 10 minutes which wasn't too bad. For no reason whatsoever, I bought a 32GB stick of RAM for around £42. Since this ThinkPad has 16GB soldered onto the motherboard with an extra DIMM slot, I thought it'd be cool to have a completely maxed out ThinkPad P14S. So with a total of 48GB, this ThinkPad should demolish any test I give it. Let's see how it does. As I was about to start all the testing, I noticed something quite serious, a large cluster of dead or stuck pixels. Keep in mind, it was the 10th of July when I discovered this, I have no idea how I did notice it sooner but it's definitely there. Obviously, I won't put up with that given there were no mention of dead pixels so I requested for an exchange or refund. Days go past without any response. I sent another email a week later, nothing. I bought the panel on the 21st of June so was quite wary on the 30 day policy. Heck, I even called up customer service but again, got no response. Now I was left with no choice but to escalate the issue to PayPal, and thank god I did. It did take a while and even PayPal contacted them with, you guessed it, no response. In the end, I got my money back and got to keep the screen which I saw as a win. Free screen? Yes please. So in the end, I spent £242 including that stick of RAM. Happy days. Alright, the P40ness has finally been repaired. Let's see how good of a ThinkPad it really is. So let me just bring it a bit forward so you can have a better look at it and just open up that ThinkPad. And one thing I didn't mention was it does have an IR sensor, so let me just focus it at the sensor. That's pretty cool. I mean, that's another form of security, which I prefer to a standard fingerprint sensor. It's good to just open up your ThinkPad and sign in straight away. All right, let me just bring it a bit closer. There you are. Let me put the backlight on, okay. And let's go into Task Manager and see what we're working with. So for the CPU, we have an i7 1185G7 with four cores and eight threads. I mean, this is the best CPU that you could configure in this laptop. I think it cost around an extra 200 pounds to configure. That's crazy in today's money, but honestly, back in the day, this must have been a workhorse. Anyways, uh, we'll see how good that CPU is later on. We'll do a Cinebench score. 
and we'll thoroughly test the CPU, stress test it, see how good it is and how stable it is. Let's go into memory. So I did upgrade the memory to 48 gigabytes. So it started off with 16 gigabytes soldered onto the motherboard, but it does have an extra DIMM slot free. So I put a 32 gigabyte stick, cause why not? I mean, just marks out this ThinkPad, pretty cool. Anyways, let's go into the disc. So we just have a standard SK Hynix 512 gigabyte disc, which is all good. Wi-Fi 6E, which is the standard today. I mean, it's better than AC Wi-Fi. We have Iris XE graphics, which we won't be using because we in fact have dedicated graphics. NVIDIA T500, which if I'm not mistaken, has four gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM, which is pretty good. I mean, I don't think I'd be gaming on this, but it can definitely play some games if you really want to. We'll obviously test some games on it to see how good it can really run them. And I think this does support shadow play. So recording on this ThinkPad, should be a breeze. So now we'll do some benchmarks to see how good and how stable this ThinkPad really is. We'll do some Cinebench scores, some Unibench Heaven benchmark scores to see how good the GPU side is. And we'll obviously throw a few games in it. Put, put some Minecraft, see how Minecraft runs. I mean, I always like to use Minecraft. It is a good benchmark to use. And we'll do some video editing because in the last video, someone did mention about doing some video editing on these ThinkPads and this ThinkPad can definitely handle it. So we'll do some Premiere Pro benchmarks to see how good those graphics really are. All right, let's go on to that real quick. Okay, here we have Cinebench R23 running on the ThinkPad P14S Gen 2. Let's see how good that i7 really is. So let's just start a multi-core score and we'll just wait here for 10 minutes and see what score we get. Cinebench ran as expected. One thing I was concerned about was those temps as I could feel a bit of warmth coming from it a meter away. Safe to say they look completely fine peaking around 88 to 89 degrees Celsius, which is typical when stress testing these CPUs. Let's see what score we get from this i7. So the test is finished and we got a multi-core score of 4011, which is around the same as the i7-4850HQ, which is around 10 years old now. I mean, I was expecting a bit higher, but nonetheless, 4,000 is still a respectable score. Let's go on to the GPU side of the benchmark and see how well that does. Okay, here we have Unigine Valley on the P14S Gen 2, and we currently have a set to quality high, stereo 3D disabled, anti-aliasing disabled, and resolution 1080p. So let's see how the graphical side of the P14S Gen 2 does. Okay, let's start the benchmark and see what score we get. I have to say, I was quite impressed with the graphical performance of the T500. Initially, it looked quite good with barely any stutters to account of. The GPU is hell bent on graphical reproduction since it is a workstation GPU, so I guess it only makes sense. Using Blender to render 3D objects and video editing must be good. Alright, so we got an average FPS of 54.9 and a score of 2297, which I'd say is quite respectable. I mean, it would have been nice to get above 60, but 54.9, can't complain with that. Here we have a 5 minute video on Premiere Pro and what we'll do is just scroll through the timeline and see if there's any lag. And as you can see, it is quite smooth, so that's a positive. And what we'll do now is just export it in 4K and see how long it takes. So let me just go and export export media and format h264 and let's go high quality 4k all right let's export the video and see how long it takes so estimated time remaining about 1 minute 43 seconds i mean that's not bad is it for a 4k video rendering as we saw with the Unigine benchmark, it did quite well, so I wasn't too surprised with the video editing performance. Rendering a 5 minute 4K video only took around 1 minute 30, which is quite staggering to be honest. Remember, this is a laptop GPU packaged in a small form factor, which makes this result even the more impressive. Pretty much, it only took around a minute 30. I mean, that's not bad for a 5 minute 4K video, is it? Well, I'm quite impressed with this, honestly. Anyways, let's test some Minecraft and see how well it runs on the P14S Gen 2. Here we have Minecraft Java 1.21 running on the P14S Gen 2. Let's see how good it really is. Okay, so just walking around. I mean, I'm getting around 290, 130, 240. And to be honest, it's perfectly playable. I would have expected a bit more, but honestly, this is all you really need. I mean, it's not meant for gaming, it's meant more for like video editing and rendering. But you can play some games on it. I mean, Minecraft is definitely running. If I look at the sky, I should be getting, yeah, okay, so close to 400. Other than that, 
it's perfectly playable. Performance benchmarks aside, let's see how the P14S Gen 2 is like from normal usage. Apps open up straight away which was expected given the sheer amount of RAM this beast beholds. No slowdowns to account of. Typing on the keyboard was like any other ThinkPad, one of, if not the best you can get in a Windows laptop, trackpad had the appropriate clicks and felt responsive, the replacement screen was simply great with great colour reproduction and those speakers were sound. Altogether, it was a pretty substantial package for the price I paid, and I'm very pleased with the results. Anyways, I think that wraps up this video. The P14S Gen 2 lives to tell the tale. It's taken ages for this video to come out, primarily due to the issues I had with the screen, but it worked out at the end. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to subscribe, like, and turn on notifications for more future videos. I've got lots more lined up. You do not want to miss them. Thanks for sticking to the end. See you in the next one.